Good evening, meteorologist Bob Acanfrio with a tropical update for Friday, July 29, 2011. Well, we have Tropical Storm Don uh, pretty much as we speak, ready to make landfall here between Corpus Christi and Brownsville. Kind of the area we pinpointed yesterday for landfall. Um, looks like mass maximum sustained winds are going to be about 50 miles an hour at landfall. A very sheared system. The shear just was relentless with this system. The dry air was relentless and never was able to really develop. Uh, if you remember about four days ago, I said we're going to be on either side. This thing could be as weak as like 40 miles an hour at landfall or possibility up to 70, 75 at landfall. I said we're going to be on either side of that. I said if the shear and the dry air stays, it's just going to stay pretty weak. And um, basically that's what it did. Um, it just couldn't, couldn't shake that. So pretty sheared system here. Unfortunately, this is not bringing a lot of rainfall to Texas, which is what they need. Um, here's looking at the visible satellite. You can see the center really is right about here on the northeastern edge of this, this cloudiness here. So the center is right about here. So ready to make landfall here between Corpus and Brownsville. Um, again, most of the rainfall is on the south end of the uh, system. A little bit of scattered showers here across Corpus Christi and northward, but really not a lot of rain, not what real Texas needs. And this is going to rapidly deteriorate and weaken as it moves west. And really most of Texas is not going to benefit from the rains from Don. And as you can see, the radar, and if I had to say the center, which is really hard to see, it's probably right about in this area here. See most of the rainfall to the south, but really not a lot of rainfall. Corpus getting some scattered showers coming ashore, but again, not some not a drought buster by any means. Um, so we say goodbye to Don. Not really much else to say to him. Well, now we're going to start focusing our attention. I showed you this area yesterday out here in the Central Atlantic. One of our first uh, first waves uh, to watch as it moved um, off the African coast here. And it's a pretty big and well-defined, uh, as you can see, the National Hurricane Center, well-defined low-pressure system, and uh, really big in, big in size. And these are the ones you really want to watch for, for development. And um, it's about 30% chance now in the next few days. And this is a system to watch. Um, if we kind of look up, this is, it's already Invest 91L, so we have a, a floater on this, a satellite floater, which we call it. And you can see a big envelope of, uh, of nice circulation here really kind of elongated right now no real big organization yet but when you see something of this size kind of spinning around here as it starts to gain uh, gain latitude here it's really going to uh, start to spin up and we're going to really have to see if these if this convection can start to consolidate that's what we really want to see for development looking at the bigger picture here here it is way out here in the central atlantic so it's still about I'd say um, about four, four, four days away from the islands. Um, looks like it's probably going to be affecting the northern, possibly the northern uh, Leeward Islands here. I'll show you model runs here in a minute. But you can see the size of this, pretty big size. So these are the ones to watch. Now, what's going to be the, 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 the deterring factor from development? Well, you can see here a lot of dry air. You know, we're kind of in that area now. And you saw with Don, um, kind of not in a favorable MJO uh, position right now. And yeah, you can still get storms when the MJO is not favorable, but still a lot of sinking and dry air when the MJO is not around in our area. And he kind of saw that with Don, and I think this one's going to be fighting this dry air. Um, and that's gonna, that could pose a problem with this one. The models are already all over the place with this system. Um, you know, especially before you get a developing system like this, they usually are. But really, it's anybody's guess whether this one's going to develop or not. But considering the size and how well defined the circulation is right now, this is definitely going to be one to watch for the islands. And we'll see if it can overcome that dry air. Um, as far as the shear, shear is going to be pretty favorable. The ships is only saying 5 to 10. Um, some other models are a little higher. We're going to really have to watch this tut feature. If it sinks a little farther south, could really get some shear going on. This higher shear is going to stay to the north. Um, this Invest 91L will slip underneath that. But we're going to have to watch this tut feature here to see if it wants to sink north and get some shear going on. That's going to be the, the factor here we'll watch. So dry air and watch this tut feature and we'll see what happens. 
Um, if you look at what's going to steer Invest 91L, subtropical high to its north, west northwest. Big high pressure over the southeast. It's dried out a lot across Florida and the southeast. This is another, this high also helped to push Don west northwest and also helped to shear Don as well. Um, but this high is retrograding to the west. So this is going to move west. This is going to stay pretty stationary. You'll actually slip a little farther west. But what's going to happen as this high moves west, it's going to open up the avenue for this trough to sink south um, during the, the early part of next week. So that is slowly going to move. You just feel like if you see this trough, it's going to have the effect of pushing this more towards the northwest. So as it nears the islands, it's going to start moving more northwest. Now, whether this system moves through the islands, north of the islands, really unsure of right now. It's going to get close to the uh, northern Leeward Islands here. So that's going to be the effects. And then from there, this is, again, over a week out. If it's sitting in this position, okay. Does this trough take it out to sea? Does it move it? You know, that. We're not going to get into those 7 to 10-day forecasts right now. That's anybody's guess. Um, just right now, if you're living across Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Anywhere on the northern Leeward Islands here, watch this system by Monday. It could be affecting you. And then from there, we'll take it from there whether it's going to go out to sea or not. It's, it's way too early in the game for that. But that's going to be the general motion. This isn't going to be a quick westward into the Caribbean. I really feel that it's going to feel the effects of this trough and move towards the northern Leeward Islands here. Okay, let's go quickly here. Um, 850 vorticity, pretty good, pretty good with our invest, still kind of stretched out, elongated, you know, it still has to get itself together, it's, it's getting there. Um, Clark Evans, uh, these are some uh, track models here, 18Z, you can see everybody pushing them really towards, like I said, the northern leewards, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, this area right in here. We've seen this track many times with systems in this, this position, and that's where, it, that's where it looks like it's headed by Monday. Um, intensity models, they're kind of all over the place right now. Again, the ships and the LGEM, they're saying 5 to 10 knots a shear. So let's bring it up to about a Category 1 hurricane in about 4 to 5 days. Some other models are lower than that. Um, the GFDL doesn't even develop this system, keeps it very weak. The HWRF has a Category 1 hurricane near the islands. Everybody's all over the place. I don't put much stock in the GFDL and HWRF until we really get a storm developed anyway. Um, but now you saw with Don, most of the models weren't really that excited about Don. And actually, they were pretty right. He never really got that exciting. So when you see a consensus, it's usually good in one way or the other. When you see something like this where some are way high, some are way low, it's anybody's guess at the moment. And again, that dry air is really going to be the, the deterring factor right now. Um, just showing you the GFS uh, model runs. This is for seven days out. I'm not going to go any farther than seven days. But you can see it slowly starts developing the system into a tropical system once it gets towards the northern Leeward Islands by about Monday and then takes it over Puerto Rico. And then here we go. Is it going to go out to sea? Is it going to come back west? Hard to say seven days out. We'll get to that. We'll get there when we get there. Uh, Euro model not really developing it at all. Really just keeps a weak system going west through the islands or barely there. No gaps, no no development at all um, with Invest 90. You know, keeps it has a kind of a little weak reflection here going through the islands, but not much there at all. Uh, just showing you a lot of the different model runs. Here's the GFDL, which keeps basically very very weak system here's the hwrf which brings it to about a category one hurricane north of the leewards um, some of the BAM models again it's too early in the game to really get focused just if you're living northern leewards puerto rico virgin islands be aware of this system possibly affecting your area by about monday monday tuesday time frame again gf um again the um mjl really not in our region we want to see it in octans uh, one and eight over here but it's taken a uh a vacation from our area and it's kind of come over this way so really needed to get back if you want to see good upward motion the forecast for the beginning of August you know semi favorable to really not favorable and that's really what we're looking at so we're not really going to get that help from the MJO um, that's needed for tropical development so just keep that in the back of your mind okay 
Well, that's my uh, update for today. I will have another tropical update um, probably during the weekend, especially if, if Invest 90, 91L decides to get going, I'll have an update this weekend. Have a nice uh, weekend. And again, you can follow me on Facebook, Robert Acanfrio, A-C-A-N-F-R-I-O. Hit me up. Um, I do sometimes during the day, if I have time, I do little quick uh, updates on Facebook. All right, have a good day.